Now we're going to look a little more closely at events and how web pages are processed. So again, I'm back in the chapter six uh, code, and I've opened up the in my web controls project uh, the event tracker page. Uh, so this is a page. It's got a checkbox, a couple of radio buttons uh, here, and then a list of events. Um, this is called list events. Uh, and then this is just a text field called txt. Now we've got some code behind this. If we look at our code behind this, uh, we're just going to try to keep track of what events fire. So on the page load event, all we're doing is we're calling our log method, which we wrote, which we'll have down here, and we're just saying page load. So here's our log uh, method, and it just adds whatever we pass to it to the list items. Uh, here. So we'll just see each event show up here as we do it. So our code will just add it. We've got a page load event that does that. A page pre-render event will log. And then whenever a control is changed, we're uh, logging that also. So we're catching those events whenever one of these are controlled. So it just gives us our view to this uh, page cycle. Again, what we're looking at is that here's our client, our web browser, and here's our server. And again, right now we're running those on the same machines during testing, but generally this, these requests will be happening over the internet. And then again, when we load our page, we'll uh, generate the objects here and run the page load event, and then render the HTML out. And again, when we click the button uh, or do some changes like that, uh, we'll see this postback event uh, being called. We'll recreate the objects and the code necessary for the page, rerun the page load event, and then any other trigger events, and finally the page is rendered back. Uh, so let's just run this page and see how it looks. So again, I already see my page load event and my page pre-render event occurring. And then as I make changes to these things, um, uh, a text change event is uh, run and then a page pre-render uh, is run uh, at various times. Now sometimes, like when I click on a radio button, <coughs> I will see a page load event and then a change event. So this you see how often the page load event is happening. Every time I make some change here, a page load event is run and then the other events happen. And here's another diagram from chapter 6 that walks us through. Uh, the, the objects are created, some page init events. We're not tracking that one in this example. The page load event occurs. Um, we do this page pre-render event. And the HTML uh, for the form is generated. There's also a page unload event uh, that is run. Let's talk a little bit more about postback then. Here's another diagram from chapter 6. And again, we're going to talk about postback. So what happens is the first time a web page is created, uh, the request is sent to the server and the page is sent uh, to the client. But then when we interact with the page, I click a button or change a radio button, um, a request is sent back to the server, and this is the uh, using the postback function. So the postback, uh, so we say the web page is posted back to the server, and the server handles these events and recreates the HTML and sends it back. To see this a little more clearly, um, let's go into our uh, event tracker, and under the page load event, I've just added a check if, uh, and then I'm just checking this. Uh, the page is postback. If that's true, um, then I'm going to log and say it's postback, otherwise it's not. So we need to know when it's not postback and when it is. Uh, so now if I run this again, I'll notice right away that the first time the page loads, it's not a postback. So it hasn't been, so that when, when it's loading the first time, it's not a postback. But now if I change anything, it is a postback. So that's why we'll often see in our code checks for 
if it's posted back or not. If you remember back in our previous example, um, under the page load event, we had this check if this dot is post back equals false. Um, and then we added elements to it. Uh, so this sort of check will make sure that this code is only run the first time the page is created. So, and we often want to do that. We want to uh, have some items run only the first time the website is generated. If we didn't have this, every time we changed or interacted, it would add more items to our uh, list and a lot of duplicate items, so we don't want that. So we'll often see this sort of check uh, or you'll see, you know, the slightly different version. You can also write it if uh, not post back um, and see it that way. In fact, we can simplify it even more that this is optional, so we can just say if uh, exclamation point not is post back. And you'll see some people writing, writing it this way also. So again, that's a brief overview of post back and how that's used with page rendering.